Hey, welcome again, Pastor Jeff. The gift of repentance. Got a special gift for you today. This is a miracle gift. Yes, it's really not, hey, it's not my gift, it's his gift, but it's available to you and me. And when you repent, God blesses you, especially when you preach repentance. That's going to be the, the, punchline, if you will, today. And watch what we do with this. It's, first of all, I'm going to show you in Acts chapter 12, a miracle happens to Peter. And it's because he was bold for Christ and he preached repentance. We're going to go back earlier in the book of Acts and see on the day of Pentecost how he did that. But first, I want to share the miracle with you. This is really a great story. It's a true story. And you say, well, wait a minute, could that happen today? Oh, yes, absolutely. The Holy Spirit is just as strong as it was 2,000 years ago. And to get to the Holy Spirit, you need to repent and come into the kingdom. That means you need to confess to the Lord what he knows already. You're a sinner. You want to turn from that sin. It's not that you just feel sorry. You want to really turn. And now, 180 degrees in the opposite direction, from this world and your flesh and your agenda, yourself, you want to go to his way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Abba Father except through me. So you made that decision. You're in the kingdom when you then, having repented, you then want him to be your Lord. You declare him to be the Lord. You admit that you know by belief that he rose from the dead you confess that to someone else and the Holy Spirit in a wonderful talk about miracles, the Holy Spirit then lives within you and you then have a life purpose, which only you can do to advance his kingdom. There's a deep joy that comes with that repentance. Talk about the gifts of repentance. Number one gift is that you're in the kingdom. The next gift is you can clean up using repentance and eventually to the point where the Lord returns, he's our bridegroom, you will be part of the bride, a clean, um, holy towards him bride. What a beautiful gift. Talk about a gift of repentance. And look at miracles here. I'm going to read Acts 12 in this wonderful New King James Version. You may want to look at your own version, but I love this one. It says, now about this time, about that time, Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some from the church. And then he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. And it was during the days of unleavened bread. So when he had arrested him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads, four squads of soldiers to keep him, intending to bring him before the people after Passover. What a hypocrite. He's honoring Passover, God's holy time, and at the same time, he's killing James and now arresting Peter. Verse 5, we're in Acts 12, verse 5. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church, people like you and me. And when Herod was about to bring him out that night, Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers, and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. And now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison, and he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly, and his chains fell off his hands. Wow, that's miracle number one. And then the angel said to him, Gird yourself and tie on your sandals. So he did, and he said to him, Put on your garment and follow me. And so he went out and followed him and didn't know what was done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. <laughs> that's great. And when they, were, they, when they were past the first and the second guard posts, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. Talk about miracles here. 
And they went out and went down one street and immediately the angel departed from him. And when Peter had come to himself, he said, now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel. Yes, this is a gift that's available to you and me and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. So when he had considered this, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathering and gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a girl named Rhoda came to answer. When she recognized Peter's voice because of her gladness, she didn't open the gate, but ran in and announced that Peter stood before the gate. This is just an incredible miracle, isn't it? Verse 15, but they said to her, you're beside yourself. And yet she kept insisting it was so. So they said, it's his angel. Now Peter continued knocking. And when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Talk about miracles. But motioning to them with his hand to keep silent, he declared to them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, go tell these things to James and to the brethren. And he departed and went to another place. Then as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers about what had become of Peter. But when Herod had searched for him and not found him, he examined the guards and commanded that they should be put to death. And he went down from Judea to Caesarea and stayed there. Verse 20, now Herod had been very angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon, but they came to him with one accord and having made Blastus the king's personal aid, their friend, they asked for peace because their country was supplied by food with food by the king's country. So on a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat on his throne and gave an oration to them and the people kept shouting the voice of a God and not of a man. Now watch what happens. The opposite of a miracle. Verse 23, we're in Acts 12, 23. Then immediately an angel of the Lord, here's another angel, struck him, struck Herod, because he didn't give glory to God and he was eaten by worms and died. But the word of God grew and multiplied. It was a testimony. Praise God. Now, I want to show you how this miracle is connected to Peter and how you can have miracles through repentance. Talk about a gift. This is a gift. Go on back with me to Acts chapter 2. Such a wonderful entire chapter, by the way. Just take your time, but we're going to start. We're going to start in verse 36. Peter's preaching. Actually, in verse 14, he starts his sermon. I'll do 14 for you. But Peter, standing up with the 11, raised his voices, his voice and said, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. And then jumping up to verse 36, therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified both Lord and Christ. And when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Well, that's the question for you and me today. By the way, I'm going to interrupt myself right here. Call me with your prayer request today. Pastor Jeff, I'm going to give you my phone number. 707-350-0659. Again, it's 707-350-0659. And or you can email me, Pastor Jeff, J-E-F-F, -F, at repentday.com, R-E-P-E-N-T-D-A-Y.com. Love to pray with you. I don't want to get so... Well, I love the word, obviously, but I don't want to get to the point where I can't answer one of your prayers. It's vital that we pray in these wicked times and that we follow the word of God. I'm glad to share it with you. Glad to agree in prayer with you. Pastor Jeff at repentday.com or 
0659. Now we're going to go back to the punchline here. Here I am again in the kitchen giving you some spiritual food, I hope. We're in Acts 2. And in verse 37, Peter having preached, the word was cutting their heart, it says. And they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And then Peter said to them, repent. That's his very first word. That was the very first word that Jesus used in Matthew 4, 17. Repent. Repent has to be first. Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, do you see the blessing here? This is the same Peter that was afraid. And at the point where Jesus was in the middle of this passion and trial and about to be crucified, they came to Peter three times and said, aren't you a Galilean? Aren't you one of them? Aren't you with him? And so forth. Each time he denied him. He did not have courage. But on the day of Pentecost, after Jesus had risen, he said, wait, the Holy Spirit's going to come to you. And so they were there in the upper room, 120 of them in Jerusalem, waiting, praying, fasting, probably confessing their own sins of pride or whatever. And the Holy Spirit came like tongues of fire. And Peter became a new man because he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And then when he preached repentance, look at the miracle that happened. Look at the miracle. God blesses, brings an angel to bless you, even if you're locked up in prison. There's nothing impossible for our God. He's the creator. Nothing impossible. That's why I want to pray with you again today. Pastor Jeff, 707-350-0659 or Pastor Jeff at repentday.com. I hope that's some spiritual food for you today. I love the Word of God. It just jumps out at you the more you read it. And look at the connection between Acts chapter 12, that whole miracle where the angel was sent by God to do a miracle, and at the same time when God was not honored by that wicked King Herod, who killed people, who was a hypocrite, who hated God, who presumed to be God himself, God immediately sent an angel and he, he died. A horrific, humiliating, death by worms kind of death. No. So there's life and there's death and choose life. Choose life today. Let's end with a simple prayer. Heavenly Father, Oh, we want to be like Peter. We want to be bold to preach repentance, even before remission of sins, Lord. And we thank you for this gift of repentance. I pray this simple word would go out to many, and they would be touched, and they would repent. If they haven't already, they would come into the kingdom. Lord, let us spread this gift of repentance far and wide. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And amen. Until next time, the gift of repentance, Pastor Jeff, 707-350-0659. Call today. We'll answer the phone. We'll pray with you. And Pastor Jeff, J-E-F-F -F, at repentday.com. God bless you. Until next time.